He and some of his fellow scientists now believed that building the bomb had opened a Pandora's box. I don't know whether it's apocryphal or not, I can't remember, but I'm supposed to have said at the time it's too late now. The military men have got their hands on the bomb. They had indeed. The following month, the first atom bomb, codenamed Trinity, was wheeled out for testing. For the scientists involved, it was a time of great tension. Very nervous. Would it work? We wanted to see the uh, actual explosion very accurately because we wanted to measure the development of the fireball. experts were astonished by the result. It was just tremendous. And uh, first it was brilliant white. And then as it rose in the atmosphere, it became dominantly purple. The gamma rays give you then this uh, purple light, that's radiation from the air. So it was a tremendous spectacle, and we all were aware what kind of a weapon it was. When they actually saw the result at uh, the Trinity test, uh, they were really flattened. I mean, it's one thing to do a calculation on a piece of paper. It's another thing to actually see it. They were, they were really flattened by it when, they, when it hit them what they had done. The very next day, Harry Truman, newly made president after the death of Roosevelt, was able to tell his allies he had a new super weapon ready to beat the Japanese. Stalin, of course, already knew about the bomb from his spies, and he made no sign of being impressed. days later, he was. Once the dust had settled, everyone knew the rules of war had changed forever. Los Alamos was a very depressed place after Hiroshima because it suddenly sank in fully what it was they had been working on. What motivated them initially was the fear that the Germans were going to get the bomb. And so they were building this thing. They weren't really building it to use it. They were building it so that they could have, you know, in case Germany did get the bomb, we would have our own bomb. And it would uh, be a stalemate uh, with regard to uh, nuclear weapons. Um, so I, don't, I think, don't think many of them seriously considered um, that it was going to be used. And there was, all these, there was all this euphemistic language. I mean, they weren't building a bomb. They were building a gadget. Among the first foreigners to pick their way through the ruins of the city was a man from Russian military intelligence called Mikhail Ivanov. We made our way through the streets, those devastated streets. All the maps were terribly confused. There was rubble everywhere, and the rubble was covered in a strange dust. It was an awful sight. When we said we had come to look at the city, one man smiled and said, what city? There is no city. There is a dreadful sickness here, he said, a dreadful sickness. People who have survived are dying from just being here.
Ivanov's report was sent straight back to the Kremlin, where Stalin summoned his Politburo to a crisis meeting. Despite all the information from his spies, he was shocked by the news from Japan. He was enraged. He banged his fist and stamped his feet. He clearly hadn't reckoned that they would really drop the bomb or that it would cause such destruction. The news couldn't have been worse time. Parat Pabedi, Itok, Yeraichiskava Putinashava Naroda, Proidinava Padvaditisvam Vilikava Stalina. After a long and bitter war, the Russians were celebrating. And not just victory, they were celebrating the future as well. It's obvious why Stalin was enraged. We had won the war. The stage was set for making Europe socialist, making it red. Nearly everything was in place, and all of a sudden this obstacle appeared, and everything was going to the dogs. Stalin was in no mood to leave anything to chance. Instead of leaving the building of a bomb to his scientists, he put his secret police in charge. The boss of the Lubyanka, Lavrenti Beria, was told he must deliver a working atomic bomb within five years. He knew that the vaults of the Lubyanka were filled with wartime intelligence. But much of it was still waiting to be read, and the volume alone told Beria one thing. The Soviets had a long way to go before they could match the United States. But within months, he was to get a message from the West that could dramatically cut down the Americans' lead. One of the top men in the Los Alamos team was willing to talk. Thank you.